Hi, so today I'm going to be talking about yeah, about the Hundred Years War. I'm going to be doing more of a overall timeline of different events that happened. But uh, I am planning on, I think it was okay, on doing a little series on the Hundred Years War because honestly it's one of the most underrated periods of history. People just don't appreciate it that much and I don't understand it. I don't understand why. I think it's really interesting. So yeah, I'm just going to do first a timeline and then do the the different phases of the Hundred Years War. So first of all, I need to say something. The Hundred Years War was by no means a hundred years. It was 116 years and it was divided into three periods of fighting. So like I said, today I'm going to do the whole timeline and then the three periods are going to in the next few days, I'm going to cover the three periods, hopefully. So, um, it went from 1337 to 1453. And, well, it was between England and France, because as we all know, England and France did not get along well. So, the first event I'm going to talk about is in June 1314, in which um, Edward III of England sends this fleet to destroy and capture some boats, uh, I mean, a French fleet at Louis. Again, sorry for pronunciation, it's terrible, I am aware of that. So yeah. Then five years later, in 1345, the Earl of Derby leads an army which captures Gascony for the English crown, Gascony being in France. In July 1346, Edward III of England, same guy, he invades Norm uh, Normandy. On, uh, in August of that year, so the 26th of August, Edward III and his son Edward, known as Edward the Black Prince, they win this huge battle against uh, Philip VI of France at Crecy in, in France, obviously. And it's a big, really significant victory for the English. And then, a few weeks later, in October 1346, David II of Scotland, uh, who is in fact an ally of Philip the, the VI of France, he invades Northern England. Then on the 17th of October 1436, so like literally that same month, not 1436, 1346, I'm sorry, that same month, while well, the English army and the fleet of the Scots sent by David II of Scotland at the Battle of Neville's Cross, which is near Durham, which is kind of in the north of England, and they actually captured David of Scotland, David II, and actually captured him. So by this time, there was still, I mean, this is 1346, there were still not just under 400 years away of from the Scottish joining the British, the English to Great Britain. So still, still a while away. Then in July 1347, so a year later, Edward of England and Edward, I mean, Edward III of England and Edward the Black Prince, they even captured the French city of, I think it's Calais. Yeah, definitely uh, Calais after uh, quite a long siege. And again, huge victory for the English, and it's going really well for them. So far, they've won battles, they've won sieges, and they've defeated the Scots, even captured their king. So it's looking quite good for the English. And then in January 15, 1350, sorry, um, so two years and a half later, well, the Black, Edward the Black Prince, he defends Calais from the French. And actually successfully defends it. And again, huge victory for the English. It's going really well for them. Then uh, a year and a half later, on the 13th of the night, oh, sorry, 19th of September, 1356, Edward the Black Prince wins another victory at the Battle of Poitiers against the French. And John II of France is captured. Again, huge deal. Well, um, then in 1359, Edward III of England and the Black Prince, they march on 
rains, but actually holds out. So kind of a win for the French. Then May 1360, the Treaty of Bretigny, again, terrible pronunciation, Bretigny, Bretigny, yeah, not gonna even try. Oh, well, I tried, but I have failed. So it was a treaty signed between England and France, which recognized Edward III claims to French lands. But even though they recognized his claims to the French lands, they rejected his claims to the French throne, which is a huge win for the French. Because, well, yes, the guy had lands there, but he didn't have the throne. So I consider that a huge win for the French. And overall, I mean, that, that ends the first stage of the um, Hundred Years' War. And although it generally goes in the French, in the in the favor, in favor of the English, I think overall the, the the French won because they got Edward the Third to say, "Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna claim a French throne." So, despite the English defending sieges, take, doing successful sieges, and even winning battles, I think that first stage, victory for the French. So before we go into the next stage, in 1362, Edward the Black Prince is made the Prince of Aquitaine by his father, Edward III of England. And then, well, five years later, on the 3rd of April, 1367, Edward the Black Prince, Edward the Black Prince, he wins the Battle of Najera in Castile, Spain. Well, modern day Spain. Castile wasn't, Spain wasn't united then. Um, it was united in 1492. So it was a like kingdom of Castile, but anyway. That is the period of, between these two periods of fighting. And now we get into the second period. So, let's get back into the Hundred Years' War. So in 1370, Edward the Black Prince retakes Limoges from the French and executes 3,000 innocent people. So, even though the English did behave quite barbarically, uh, it was a victory for the English because he did kill 3,000 innocent people and we took Limoges, or however you pronounce that. Then from around 1372 to around 1375, the, I mean, the King of France, Charles V, he managed to recapture the majority of the territory gained by Edward III. So the English were left only with Gascony and Calais, and Calais, I think, remains in the hands of the British, of the English, sorry, of the English until 15... 1552, 53? They, 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 no, not 52. 15 would be 56, 57 around that time. Because they lost it with Mary I. But yeah, that's a huge win for the French. They managed to retake all the land. Well, yeah, most of the land that was taken by Edward III. So kind of a big deal for the French. So right now, the French are not doing too badly. Then on 2nd of March, 1396, the King of England, Richard II, um, marries Isabella of France, who is the daughter of Charles VI of France, so on, another French king, which um, ends up sealing around a three-decade peace between the two countries. So this is another period of fighting. Overall, I mean, yeah, Edward Black Prince, he did take the Bourget, but I do think that that was a victory for the French. And then victory for both at the end, because of the treaty of well, the peace between two countries. And all is well until 1415. Well, 1413, Edward V comes to, like, oh my god, Henry V. <laughs> so many names. Henry V um, becomes king. And here, well, 1415 starts the yeah the third and final period of fighting during the Hundred Years' War. 
So it's 1415, like I said, September. Remember, September, because a lot of things happened in 1415. Well, he captured the French port of Harfleur. How do you pronounce that? Harfleur. And then the 25th of August, 1415, the Battle of Passion Court. If you know anything about the Hundred Years' War, you have to know about the Battle of Passion Court. Probably the most significant battle of the entire war between uh, the English and the French, won by the English. So, yeah, huge deal for the English. That was a huge win. Then, from around 1417 to 1419, Edward V leads a campaign to conquer Normandy. Successful one. So, again, we took Normandy. And then, in January 1419, he recaptures. Rouen. Oh yeah, with the fifth. Oh my God, Henry the fifth. Henry the fifth is not doing too badly for himself, considering he's quite young. Not too bad. Then a really significant thing happened in May, fourteen twenty. Treaty of Troy was signed between England and France, and this made Henry the fifth the successor to the French throne of Charles the Sixth. So when Charles the Sixth would die, Henry the Fifth would take his place. And it was also stated that, and this happened on the 2nd of June, 1420, Henry the Fifth would marry Catherine of Valois, who was the daughter of Charles the Sixth. And after Henry the Fifth's death, which, you know, I'm not going to talk about, but after his death, she goes on to marry Owen Tudor. And from this line, the Tudor dynasty happens. So, so on March 19th, oh my god, March 1421, sorry, the English army loses to the French army at the Battle of Bourget. But a year later, on the 11th of May 1422, Henry V captured the French stronghold at Moa, Mo, Moa, captures this French stronghold. So, huge deal for the English, they lost, they lost at the Battle of Bourget, but then won again. And then, then 2029, a uh, little known lady, little known lady called Joan of Arc, she leaves the left the lifts the siege of Orleans. Huge deal for the French. That's why she was named the Maid of Orleans. But yeah, so the English were doing quite well up until this point. Quite well in this period, I mean. And then, well, of course, I mean, Henry V of England had died in 1422, so he couldn't have claimed the, <laughs> the French throne. So, on the 17th of July, 1429, Charles VII of France was crowned and reigned. Well, reigns was the traditional land, where like the traditional place where the French kings would be crowned. And that's why Joan of Arc was so important, because she, I, mean, I made a video on this quite recently. If you want to check it out, go watch. But, um, she I mean, was in the hands of the English, and she received Missions thing that she needed to to make sure that brings was free for the French king to be crowned in. So, on the sixteenth of December, fourteen thirty-one, Henry the Sixth of England is crowned. Not king of England, no, 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 king of France in Notre Dame, Paris. Fourteen thirty-one. The guy is nine years old. He was born in 1422. As nine years old, he was already king of England and king of France. What have you done? <laughs> so in 1434 to 1435, to Henry Talbot, he orchestrates this quite successful defense of an English held city in France. Yeah, the city it is, Paris, but hey. <laughs> And then 1435, the English happened to lose the support of the Burgundians during the Hundred Years' War, which was quite a huge blow for the English. 
then 1436, they lose power. Quite sad because they're in two years earlier they had successfully defended it, they now lost it. Then from 1444 to 1449, uh, there was this kind of truce between England and France, but then in 1445, England lost the throne of Maine. Then on the 22nd of April, 1445, Henry VI of England married Margaret of Anjou, who was the niece of Charles VII of France. Then in 1450, the English lose control of Normandy, again. 1453, the English lose control of Gascony, leaving the only territory in control of the English, Cal like Calais was the only territory in control of the English, sorry. And um, then in July of 1453, the English are defeated by the French at the Battle of Castillon, the last battle of the Hundred Years' War. Well, at the beginning of the third period, considerable French victory by the end, well, after Henry V's death, it's kind of a failure, but you can kind of say that's because the King of England got to the throne who was just nine months old, so didn't have that much experience. So that is the Hundred Years' War, brief timeline. I mean, I still don't get why people just don't think it's interesting. I, it's just French, English, French, English. It's really interesting. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to say anything else because, well, yeah. So expect some new videos on the Hundred Years' War in the days to come. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you liked it, hope you found it interesting. And yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.